Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Well, there's the audio. Uh, it's been a while. We're back here. Uh, welcome to Getting Sketchy Live. Uh, I'm Matt with virtualinstructor.com, and I'd like to welcome everybody here on YouTube who's watching this. Um, we do have sound now. I, I had forgot to uh, turn on the microphone, but that is now behind us, and we're ready to get sketchy once again. This is the beginning of Season 5. We've been away for a couple of weeks, but we're back. And what is Getting Sketchy where... Well, Getting Sketchy is where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist uh, and art teacher Ashley Hurst tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. We have a timer and everything. Of course, the drawing is going to be a little bit sketchy, and of course, we try to do it here live for you on YouTube. And also, we try to sprinkle in a little bit of art instruction as well. And tonight, for our first uh, broadcast of this lesson, Ashley is going to be doing the first drawing. And he's sitting right over there. Ashley, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, Matt. Thanks for asking. I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Tonight's going to be pretty sketchy. <laughs> I broke my glasses. So we'll see how the drawing comes out. I'm not that far away. I can see fine. Um, and I had no idea that happened. Did that just now happen? <laughs> it happened earlier today. Oh, really? But I can still, I can still use them. You know, I can. Are you sure? Hold them there. It's, oh, maybe, Are you? You're actually. I might, gonna... I might break one off so it's more like a monocle, <laughs> and that way it won't be off balance. <laughs> and and you're actually going to use the glasses? Um, just occasionally to check my reference. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we're both coming to you a little bit uh, not optimal tonight. I. I've recently gotten into surfing and I went surfing this weekend. Uh, there's a hurricane off the coast or there was a hurricane, so it was producing some large waves. And um, the waves were bigger than what I was used to. And I, I told Ashley this earlier, but on three different waves, I lost my wedding band, I lost my surfing hat, and I lost a contact. And after I lost a contact, <laughs> I stayed out there and surfed for another hour and a half only being able to see out of one well, eye. Well, there you go. So see, you don't actually need both eyes. I'm going to snap that lens off and just use it as a monocle. It worked for Matt. It can work for me, too. Yeah. Well, my daughter and I, I think, surfed so much, and I wore out my muscles, and then I tried to pick up my big golden retriever, Willie, to put him back in the, the car, and I was twisting while I did that, and I just literally snapped something in my back. And for the past two and a half days, I have not been able to walk really. Today is the first day that I've really been able to just shuffle around. So here at my desk, <laughs> I have uh, a pillow behind me and I'm also wearing uh, some icy hot on my back. I, I realize this makes me sound like I'm like um, falling apart. And falling the, apart. The, the truth is I kind of am falling apart generally 100% of the time. This is just pretty much normal. Uh, but I didn't know your glasses were messed up here. Diane so. Lynn says, oh, no, your wedding band. Diane, Matt has lost about 10 wedding bands. <laughs> so he, he has packs of them now. So yes. it's not as big a deal as it yeah. seems. All right. All right. Listen, the first wedding band I lost, and they're all, all, most all of them have been lost in the ocean or at the beach. That's right. Uh, the first wedding band was really nice. It was engraved. It was half titanium, half gold, I think. It was super nice. Very nice. I had it for a short period of time because I was throwing football in the ocean with my cousin and it popped off and I lost it. So I got another wedding band to replace it, another nice metal one. Um, and then I was throwing football in the ocean with one of my friends and it popped off and I lost that one. <laughs> the same way, mind you. Then I got another wedding band. I was washing my hands, it went down the drain and ironically, I was at the beach when it happened. Um, <laughs> then I started investing in these little rubber- The neoprene. The, yeah, the little yeah. neoprene. They're great. Yeah, they I are great those. and I have a package of them. So when I lose a wedding band, I just throw another one on mm -hmm. and- um, It's like the band is a symbol for you know your love for your wife. Right. So your new wedding band is the symbol for your old wedding band, which was the symbol for your love for your wife. Yes, very nicely put. So <laughs> there's no big deal about losing the wedding bands. It's just, I, I just need to make sure that I'm wearing one, um, of course. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think we've, we've used quite a bit of time. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was good catching up with all of you. I guess we should start drawing pretty soon. Yeah, one one last thing here. If you are watching this live on YouTube, there is a chat box, of course. You can make comments and ask questions. And during tonight's broadcast, as I'm scanning the chat box here, um, they don't have to be anything art-related. They don't. Your questions don't have to be about what we are doing tonight. They can be anything art-related. Um, and if you put your questions or comments in all capital letters, that will help me see it a little bit easier because the chat box does get rolling pretty fast here on YouTube. Um, 
and we'll do our best to answer those questions for you. Ashley's going to be working with Graphite tonight. And are you ready to go? Everyone? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I was, right. I'm sorry. I was looking down at my tools. <laughs> We'll see how this goes um, with <laughs> Ashley being blonde over there. And, I was looking really uh, closely at my tools, trying to read what in the world was written on the pencils. <laughs> I think I'm ready. <laughs> All right, this should be super sketchy. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive into this one. All right, so I'm changing it up a little bit this season. Last season, I drew things that came in pairs, and they were mostly manufactured items like salt and pepper shakers, keys and locks, um, uh, electrical plugs, things like that. So I wanted to work with or imagery that was a little more organic this season. So I've chosen an outdoor scene. Oh, sure, there's a park bench in there, and that was manufactured, but it's dwarfed by that beautiful old tree. So I'm going to stick with graphite tonight. I hope you are ready to draw along with me. The materials shouldn't be a barrier. It's just white drawing paper, like 80-pound drawing paper from a sketchbook. I tore it out, but it is from a sketchbook. And I have this dark pencil, a 6B pencil that I'll do mo the bulk of the drawing with. And then I also have this very old, very ancient Stiedler 7H pencil. So it almost doesn't even make a mark. I'm going to start with it, <laughs> mostly in the background. If you look at the sky in the background, there's sort of a semi-banded gradation that's going down. And I'm actually going to start with that, just, just shading in the background a little bit, and then work on top of that. Okay, so let's see. Besides the pencils, I have just a plain pink rubber eraser. It's like a pink pearl, but not a pink pearl. I've got an electric eraser that I started using some last season, and I feel like I can't draw without it. And I've got a beef stick in case I get hungry, but I don't think I'm going to need that. <laughs> so the show's not really that long. But those are, uh, just so you know, those were my supplies for tonight. All right. A beef stick? Yeah. Where did, you are full of surprise. <laughs> I, br I brought props tonight. <laughs> not intentionally. I just, uh, you know, I picked up my daughter a little late from softball practice, and I didn't eat a full dinner so the beef stick is just in case <clears throat> i wouldn't eat it during the show i promise well, i didn't have a full dinner either i could only eat half of my chick-fil-a sandwich because they did not sift the flour correctly oh no oh no um so just so you know matt worked at chick-fil-a yeah decades ago so he knows when it's done right and when, when it's done wrong time. all right uh, so do we have you, a timer are you ready for the timer yeah i think so let's go ahead and bring right, it up we're gonna put 45 minutes on the clock okay hope you guys are all ready out there and um you know tonight's gonna be there's a lot of texture in the tree just um, incidentally by the way i'm not going for the texture in the tree because texture is my least favorite element of art i'm going to focus more on value and, f and the form of the tree so i might use some some scribbling and some lines in there that just kind of barely follow the roundness of the tree a little bit. We'll be creating types of texture, but we're going to do it with our marks, or we're going to use um, invented texture instead of trying to simulate the actual texture of the ground or the tree. All right, let's go. Oh, oh my gosh, the timer's already moving, so I better oh, start moving too. Yeah, you were talking. All right. Sid, where's the timer? Yeah, we started. Okay, so. We're starting with the 7H <coughs> pencil. Just finding a few spots in here where I think the ground is going to be, and then I'm going to kind of shade down to it. I'll have to be honest. I, I don't think I've ever used a 7H pencil before. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't think I have either. I, I'm looking in my drawer. I don't even, I'm not sure I even have a 7H pencil. That is super light. I'm going to go ahead and make our border a little bit clearer now. I had already kind of drawn it on here, but I used a 7H pencil. And you probably couldn't see it. There we go. And uh, Hot Potting Mad says, Matt, you need to stay away from the beach. I'm not going to stay away from the beach. That's not going to happen nope. ever. Um, and it's too uh, great. Lana says, stop wearing your band to the beach then, <laughs> LOL. Yeah, that's good advice. Well, now I can't do that either. I just don't really think about it. You, you don't know? need to when you have a pack of disposables. Right. When I have 30 replacement rings... <laughs> All right, I'm just pretty much using horizontal strokes in the background. I'm trying to keep them relatively straight. Don't want curvy strokes in the sky. Um, I don't want the sky to feel like a form right now. You can use curvy strokes in a sky sometimes, but I think I'm going to go with just flat, just level. They're 
are some clouds in the sky, and we may try to just pull those back out with some eraser marks later in the drawing. Now, this seems interesting because it basically has two subjects for the most part. It's true. So which of these two would you feel like is the dominant focal point? I think it's the tree, probably. You think so? I don't know, because actually the tree kind of points you to the bench. It does. That's the issue. And the bench is located in one of those uh, intersecting points of the third. It is. Like. Yeah, it is. So, I, you know, if I was critiquing this, I, think I would it's, say that the, the bench is the focal point, but the yeah. tree is definitely competing for a lot of attention. Well, I, I feel like they balance each other. You know, yeah, the tree I can see is, that. And that's really what I'm going for here from the two halves. The bench is smaller, but it is, you know, it is manufactured. It has those relatively parallel lines, and uh, because of that, I feel like it's got a lot of visual weight. All and right. that negative space around and behind the bench of the sky also helps. Yeah, it isolates it. Mm -hmm. Isolation is a way to create emphasis. Very good point. All right. We'll jump into the tree in just a second. It doesn't matter. I could cover the whole page because almost all of the tree is darker than the sky, so... Um, I'm shading sort of through where the tree is going to be a little bit. And those marks should eventually just sort of disappear into our tree. All right, well, that gives us somewhat of a base back there. It's probably still not dark enough, but I'm going to go ahead and get into the tree now. And Buddy says, hi, Buddy, first of all. Uh, yay, so happy to see you back. Not sure whether I can make it for the later live session uh -oh. due to the time delay. And that reminds me, I completely forgot that uh, we do have a membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, a variety of different subjects and mediums, obviously. And we also do weekly live lessons that are part of the membership program. And uh, we do that every week, <clears throat> not just like what we do here on Getting Sketchy. Uh, those live lessons are more in depth where we create a finished piece of artwork from start to finish. And tonight we'll be continuing, I guess it's part six, Part six? I think so. It's four, yeah. Five or of six. Of, I'm working on a portrait of my daughter, my youngest daughter, with <clears throat> charcoal. So we'll be continuing that after tonight's uh, broadcast here on YouTube. You do have to be a member to access uh, those live lessons and also those courses, and weekly critiques, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. But there's a link in the description below if you want to go check that out a little bit later. You can check it out. Everyone starts out with a... a, a a free trial for a week, so you can go in there and check it out and get access to everything and see if the program's right for you. All right, so it looks like you're starting out with some of the contour lines on the tree. That's and right. And also the bench there. Yeah, I'm just going to throw some lines in here to guide me. You know, the bench, I mentioned that the bench has parallel parts, but they're not actually parallel. They're in perspective a little bit. You can probably see the bench is pinching a little bit towards the right. So be careful with that in your own drawing. Alana says, I think I'm going to be rebellious and do this piece in charcoal instead of graphite. And that's pretty rebellious. I like, I like that kind of rebellion. Yeah, that's... Charcoal is a serious medium. Okay. I think the bench is in a, about the right place. Now, one of the reasons that I've selected or I'm deciding to go with slightly more organic imagery this season is so that I can uh, get past the proportions a little bit sooner and start shading sooner. I've complained about that to myself and to you guys a little bit about not <laughs> shading soon enough or having a subject matter that kind of restricts me from being able to get to that step or stage in a drawing until pretty late. And so I'm trying to avoid that a little bit myself this but, season but to be contradictory some of those drawings that were very intricate that you did uh like the vw bug for example yeah that was shaded adequately i know you did a lot of that at the end yeah it was but 10 minutes of shading shading is one of those things that you can do really slowly or really quickly um and you still can arrive at a successful drawing slash sketch yeah even if you do it very quickly as long as you have a broad range of value and a full range of value yeah for that specific drawing you know i don't feel like the shading was um what it was about anyway you know it's such mm -hmm. a kind of a cool object the vw bug cool and, shape. and the shapes right yeah. it's really about shape for me so all and right. one of the things that, uh, you, you know, I talk about a lot is there are multiple ways to, to be successful. So, uh, you know, don't feel like you have to 
spend a certain amount of time on one element of a drawing or develop a drawing a very specific way in order for it to be successful. There's lots of ways to be successful. Oh, that's right. Speaking of which, um, I'm going to hold my pencil a little bit different. Tonight, I'm going to hold it down low and uh, do a little bit more of sort of the side pencil shading. I'll cover a lot of space, and it'll change my mark quite a bit. Yeah, I like that. I like, like what you're doing. You know, if you want your art to look different, just uh, hold, your, hold your pencil different and, see, and then do everything else the same and see what happens. So like I said, this is my way of creating a type of texture, maybe not um, bark, mark for mark, bark for bark, but a type of texture. <laughs> But those marks naturally do look a little barky. A little bit. Yeah. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm hoping, without having to really think about it too much. Now, this is a 6B pencil, so it can get quite a bit darker. Um, but I'm okay if this drawing stays a little bit lighter than what we see in some of the reference. Now, you're using a 6B. Did you consider using a 2B pencil? Um, Did you say to yourself... Is it to be or not to be? <laughs> <laughs> I tell that joke in class, too. Yeah, and I also like to talk about the 4-H. Yeah, right. That started the club. club. Yeah. Yeah. The 4-H pencil, do any of you belong to that pencil? <laughs> Probably not too many people know what the 4-H is. I don't think. It depends on what more. part of the country you're in, possibly. Yeah. It may have been more, popular, more of a popular program in, in some places, more than others. So I'm looking for the darkest areas right now. Um, I know I, I started drawing the bench in. I started getting carried away with myself and abandoned that because that's practically a detail in here. So I decided to go back to the tree and uh, find the darkest areas first, and then I can work my way towards the lights. Now, did you say how you broke your glasses? Um, they Well, it's it's... Were you in it a fist fight? It was a, yeah, I should have made that up. That would have been a great story, but I was going to just tell you the truth, which is not nearly as interesting. So it's a, it's a two-parter. I stepped on them a couple of months ago, and then I thought I fixed them. I thought I fixed them myself, but apparently they were weakened uh -huh. in the little hinge, you know, that flexes open and closed a little bit. Yeah. And um, so I guess I was just moving around a little too fast the other day, and they fell off of my face, and when they hit the ground... The, uh, or this morning, and they fell off my face and hit the ground and broke into two pieces. Yeah. So what can you do? Make an eye exam. It's time anyway. But now you are nearsighted, right? So yes, you can see I can, things I can up see, close. Well, you know, I should, I should, uh, I guess I'm not nearsighted anymore. My prescription is for bifocals, but I, I didn't get bifocals. I just got the the singular focal yeah. for, for distance, and yeah. I wear reading glasses sometimes. Well, you know, my eye doctor told me that I could wear one contact in, an, in one eye, and that would balance out the, the bifocal. My wife does that, Matt. But it sounds crazy. It sounds too crazy it's, to it, me, so yeah. I haven't tried it. Um, I, got, I can do you one better. I was talking to my mother-in-law about this um, because I'd broken my glasses, and I was telling her about it today, and she said that uh, she knows somebody that has... A, a reader in one of their actual lenses like for glasses, mm -hmm. not a contact, and then a, a distance lens in the other. So it's like the contacts, but in actual glasses. I would be running into trees. I, I would run into doors. The first few days would be difficult, yeah. but apparently our brains get used to it. I'll bet there's somebody in the chat who has a reader in one eye and a distance lens in the other. Maybe I they can help right, us out. Yeah. It's, it's more common, I think, now than it used to be. All right, Alana says, we had 4-H here in the Caribbean All right. when I was a kid, but I don't hear about it anymore. And the same here. A lot. Yeah. 4-H was I don't big hear when about I was it a anymore. kid and right. then don't hear about it anymore. So I'm not sure what happened to 4-H. Might still be there. I hope so. Maybe it went the way of the dinosaur. Maybe it's changed its name. Maybe Revolved. it's 5-H now. Maybe yeah. they've added another it's H. It's so old. Or maybe they took an H away. <laughs> It's just three H's due to cutbacks this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> due to the shipping crisis, there's just going to be three H's. So, <laughs> All right, I'm looking at these little empty shapes. You know, we've got the advantage, and I uh, say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, 
of drawing from a photograph, there are great advantages not to drawing from photographs. But if you're going to use a photograph, you're going to get these little borders here that enclose your shapes. And so I've been using those. So I've been looking at these little empty spaces that the tree um, over here creates with itself between its own branches and here too. And then also the negative or empty shapes created by the tree and the border. And that's always something I'm looking for. It's something I probably talk about almost every drawing is the empty space because it's in a drawing it's just as real and tangible i don't know if you can hear that but it's just as real as the tree because neither one of them are real they're just shapes together so you can try to think about them that way Lori says 4-h is still big in ohio so uh, that's cool i'm glad it's still around i'm glad it's still a 4-h yeah um my brother you know he lives in ohio now love that state just get, I'm just getting acquainted with Ohio, and I like it. 4-H is still big here in Colorado, too, says Karen. 4-H is still in Missouri, says Brad. So it's still around. Maybe we're just in too much of an urban environment. Maybe to, so. You know, where we live, there are, um, there are still, still big farms and small farms, but there's just less of them, even than, you know, when I was a kid. All right, so now I'm down in the ground. I'm just looking for the darkest patches. The mid-tone should start to bring this together here in a little while. But just looking, and, you know, because this is organic subject matter, um, it's a little more forgiving than the manufactured objects I had been drawn. I just want to get these patches in about the right place. Now, there is this little wiggle. You're going to have to look really close. There's a little wiggle of a lighter value that runs through here. Now, I'm going to trace it again. I'll trace it with the back of my pencil. It kind of zigzags through here, and then a little light that runs up in front of the bench. And I'm going to try to turn that into a little bit more of an of a open space or a pathway, something like that. I like diagonals coming in from the bottom edge of a picture plane. And so I want to create a little bit of a pathway. I don't know if it's going to work out, but I want to yeah, maybe exaggerate the lightness a little bit and give a feeling of a pathway. And that would be a nice lead in into the space, back into the space, maybe help push the bench mm -hmm. and the feeling of the bench in the tree back a little further. Now, here's a theoretical question for you. Let's say the bench was positioned in the opposite direction and the perspective was going off towards the left of the picture plane instead mm -hmm. of the right. Would you say that that would be a stronger composition? Um, well, you know, they would be echoing back and forth at each other. Yeah. The bench would actually be pointing us to the tree more so. I mean, yeah. these lines still point towards the tree, but they they're do. not pinching towards the tree yeah. like an arrow. Right. So I would say, yeah, probably so. Hmm. Probably so. Um, Dan says you can wear a monocle like in Hogan, Hogan's Heroes. And actually, when my eye doctor ah, told yes. me that I needed bifocals, I, I'm, I obviously don't have bifocals. I occasionally wear reading glasses, like maybe occasionally when I'm trying to read a magazine and I can't see it. Uh, which that sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, anyway, I, he, I said, so you're telling me I can get a monocle. He said, oh, well, sure, if you want. Uh, nobody decides to go that route, but uh, he you can if you want. He, I was like, he you doesn't don't know, know me. You. Yeah, he doesn't know you well enough, so. I would walk around with that monocle all the time. Definitely. Just pull it out. Just the fact that it reminds people of Hogan's Heroes is a good reason you enough. You know, I was thinking Monopoly. What a but, great shape. Uh, me too, but uh, I totally failed to remember the Hogan's Heroes reference, so what a great show. All right, Marina says, I'm lucky to be able to watch this while being at the workplace. Well, I'm yes, glad you, you can are. watch it too, Marina. I'm glad that you're um, able to watch it And as hopefully well. you're able to get some drawing exercise in at the workplace too. Mm -hmm. Without getting in trouble, of course. Yeah. And Diana points out that the lighter value might be a footpath leading to the bench. So that could I, be I think actually it, yeah, a, I think it a path is. anyway. It probably so is. I just want to make sure, it, try to make sure it looks that way. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it is. It's just because the values are a little bit dark in that area, we're losing some of that. So People we just want to bring to, it back. have to get there somewhere, it was some way. And I think uh, it's interesting. You're definitely approaching this drawing like a painter. You mean the way I'm blocking, kind of just jumping around? You're blocking around. in the dark values yeah. first, like you're creating an underpainting. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm a one-trick pony, I guess. 
Julie says, you're both too young for Hogan's Heroes. And I oh, wish no. that was true, Julie. I wish now, that was true. Honestly, um, I watched a lot. I, we, we weren't born in the 60s. Right. But that's where all the good TV was. So I watched we a lot know. of older television growing up. <laughs> well, Hogan's Heroes used to come on every day after school. That's right. You know, there was, a, you know, it was Hogan's Heroes, Lassie mm -hmm. would come oh, on. Yeah. Um, the Three Stooges came on on Saturday morning, but what was one of the other shows that would come on in the afternoon that was older? Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island. I Love Lucy. I all those shows used to come those. on in the afternoon. All right. And uh, let's see. Here's an interesting question, and it's from Simon, and it says, here's a first question. Is it okay to use Minecraft to practice point perspective in flat land <laughs> like i place one block and draw it in different angles same as the house and other stuff um sure i, I guess so. i i don't know enough about minecraft my son i tell you what i'm minecraft. learning a lot about minecraft you and know i watch a lot of minecraft youtube with my son lately yeah my son has minecraft and played it for a little while but he kind of just wandered around aimlessly and would build things and then destroy it and maybe that's the whole point of the game. No, I, no. I don't really know. But There's, you can build all kinds of machines yeah. with the redstone blocks. That are, you know, and there's another way to make. I mean, I know I sound but like I don't do you know what I'm the talking game? about. Do you there's win some, the game? I don't think so. You just walk well, around. Well, I mean, you can play with other people and try to, you know, build fortresses yeah. that you defend. I think and things like that. But my son mostly just constructs. He just you know watches other people. Um, build things and then build sort of similar, um, you know, uh, structures. Or he's really getting into building like devices that move, you yeah. know, and do do things, raise levels up and down, or, or open. all this in Minecraft. Yeah, all in Minecraft. It's pretty neat, actually. Uh, now, I yeah. used to give him a hard time about it. Now, and I'll, then I started watching. I was like, this game is so. If you're a creative person, you can go a long way in this in yeah. this uh, platform. And a patient person, probably. And a patient person, yeah. right? Um, now, now that I think about it, I think the only type of linear perspective that you'll probably be able to see in action, Simon, in uh, Minecraft is probably three-point perspective. It's probably coded in a way so that uh, all of the elements are in three-point perspective. I don't think you'll see a lot of one-point perspective. You'll probably see some angles where two-point perspective makes sense, but I would say that in, for the most part, you're probably going to see three-point perspective in Minecraft. Wouldn't you agree? Because you probably look sure. up extreme, at, at some extreme angles of cubes. Sometimes. So, yeah, but you can also look straight at them. Yeah, but it's probably coded oh, in a way so that everything is three-point three perspective. I got you. Because that's really how we see the world. Yeah, and then it can also look like or look like two or three, two or one-point perspective two, depending on yeah. where you're standing. Probably, probably be hard to find angles where you where you see just one-point perspective. I don't know. Next week. In two weeks when I draw again, our subject matter is going to be something my son built in, my, in Minecraft. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll not figure organic. this out. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. GP says, hello, guys. Have you used the new type of Faber-Castell pit matte pencils? They have a range of eight pencils from HB to 14B. What? That's a lot of... How does it go HB to 14B if there's only eight pencils? They must skip oh, over some. Oh, okay. Um, they look a bit similar to Mars Lumograph, Black Steedler. Um, I have not used those pencils before, but I do like the idea of having matte graphite pencils. Yeah, uh, Blackwing too. makes a, a matte pencil that has less shine. I really like that pencil. Um, it's somewhere in between a a carbon pencil and uh, a 6B pencil, I would say. So if those favor castle pencils are similar to that, that might be something that I'd like to check out, of course. Now, I'm still using the side of the pencil pretty much for most of the drawing, but um, I'm starting to use some strokes that are a little bit longer and follow the curve of the forms, whether it's a branch, you know, just to put some contour lines on here because I'm, I'm trying to work on you know i'm kind of my focus tonight is value and form and look how much those cross contour lines you've added on that branch bring out the illusion of form yeah, already you know without really any shading i mean they don't the, the lines are 
doing some of the shading too, but you go a long way in describing the form. And I think it's interesting too, you also decided to do those kind of horizontal cross contour lines on the, the, on the, on trunk, the trunk of the tree right. instead of, you know, the flowing lines that you kind of see with the bark there. Right, I'm ignoring that. Yeah, I think that the way that you're doing it better communicates the form of the tree. Right, so I agree. You could go either way. Yeah, course, sure. It depends but. on your goal, you know. It depends on what you want to get out of your drawing, what you're most interested in. And like I said, I am very much not interested in uh, trying to copy natural textures. But I do like drawing things that are from nature. Okay, Diana says the drawing is coming along so nicely, and I agree. I bet oh, right. lots of other people would agree as well. Um, but he says... Question, if you liked to draw the scene from a different perspective, for example, a bird's eye or a frog, frog's eye view, is there any tip to find the correct perspective? If you're, if you're drawing an image from a forced perspective, like very low to the ground or very high up, then most of the time you're going to be seeing things in three-point perspective. Um, but you, you really only need to worry about linear perspective or using linear perspective when you have very geometric forms that you're trying to include. Most of the time when you're drawing a human figure, for example, from above or below, you can put them in a box or you can put them in a rectangle, but you're still going to be dealing with the foreshortening that happens there. So it's really best to just go from, from pure observation instead of trying to figure everything out with perspective. Uh, that's True. my personal opinion. So I really would only worry about using linear perspective when you have geometric forms that you're trying to put in space. How do you, how do you feel? Yeah, about that? I agree. And you can't really observe them. You yeah. know, I mean, I use three point perspective. I'm sorry, linear perspective for when I'm drawn from my imagination. Yes, I agree. I, I hardly ever. I mean, I keep perspective in mind when I'm drawing. I, a scene I, I look for it like right. I did with a bench. You know, I wanted to notice that they were pinching. Right. These, uh, these boards. I wanted to notice that there is a vanishing point, but I don't need to find the vanishing point over here when I actually have a reference of the bench in front of me. I can just use my pencil and tilt it to match an angle, regardless of where the vanishing point actually is, and then just move that over to my page. Exactly. So... There are so many devices to use in drawing that sometimes it's really easy to get kind of wrapped up in, in what device you should be using, and sometimes that's a good thing to consider but a lot yeah. of times it's just kind of dive in and go to it <laughs> you want to find your process you know whatever that is um for each person by trying different things but uh and then you know go with, go with what works for you and stick with that even if it's different than how other artists might work <laughs> uh gregory asked uh, hey matt i see you recommend the golden heavy body acrylic paints is this brand worth more than twice as much as the windsor and newton galleria um, well, the Galleria paints, I believe, are student grade. Is that correct? I believe they are. Oh, no. And the heavy body acrylics are considered professional uh, paints. So the pigmentation in the golden heavy body paints is going to be a little bit stronger than what we see in the Galleria. And I may be wrong, but uh, I do have a couple of tubes of the Galleria, Galleria paint. Um, but I also recommend Liquitex acrylic paints as well. In fact, I used the golden heavy body acrylics for quite a while. And then I just kind of, you know, in the last year or two, switched over to using Liquitex. And both brands are really great. Uh, so uh, I really like the, the golden heavy body acrylic paints, of course. And I also really like the Liquitex. I think the Liquitex might be about the same price. Maybe they're a little bit cheaper than the, the heavy body acrylic paints. But another brand that's really worthwhile looking at are the Liquitex uh, Basics. I believe that's their student line. I believe that's they're right. called Basics. And, and we uh, we use uh, gallons of Basics every year, and they and, are good paints. Yeah, they're, they're a great paint. If you're yeah. looking for a more economical choice, you can buy uh, large to tubes of it. Yeah, I would go with the Liquitex Basics. Um, the Windsor & Newton Galleria, I, I'm sure, are great paints as well. And, and pricing is one of those tricky things, but... With most of the things in the art world, with most of the materials, I would say that you get what you pay for uh, with most of the materials. I don't really see that there's a whole lot of price inflation based on brand name in the world of, of art materials uh, because it's kind of hard to hide the fact if your quality is pretty low. That's true. <laughs> um, so... Uh, and that's not necessarily the case for other products that people pay lots of money for that aren't necessarily that much better than, than cheaper 
than cheaper products. So um, just some food for thought there uh, when you are shopping for art materials. I, I, I like to work on papers that uh, a lot of people consider to be pricey, but I do think that that is important, uh, that the foundation that you create your artwork on is is one that's strong. If you're going to spend a lot quality. of time on it, you want right. that paper to hold up. Right. So uh, I do think, you know, there is kind of a correlation with what you pay for and what you get in the world of art materials. All right. I'm going to get start getting darker in the background now that I can tell I need to. Of course, we have all these, not all, we have some fun branches to put in right here. We're going to be leaving some of those out because they're a little, little messy looking. I want to clean them up. A little bit. And Iris says, hi, just catching up. Nice drawing so far. Glad you guys are back. And we're right. glad to be back, too. Dan says, have you added any more classes for watercolor and the watercolor support? And what are the pros and cons of using watercolor board as the support? Um, I don't know. I don't know when the last time you checked <laughs> what classes we offer for watercolor. Uh, we do have a lot of live lesson series, too, uh, which are not, you know, in-depth courses. The courses that I, I create are usually pretty in depth and instead of just doing one or two demonstrations there's lots of demonstrations in a course it does take a lot of time to do courses but the live lesson series are really more like what most people consider courses um and they're you know they're one piece of art that's created so you might want to check those out if you haven't had a ch chance to look at that we do have the watercolor workshop uh, and we have line and wash as the two main courses uh, dealing with watercolor right now and uh, let's see, what are the pros and cons of using watercolor board as the support? Do you, do you understand what he's asking there with a the watercolor board? Like illustration board? Is it like illustration board? No, I'm not board? sure. He's I'm saying not watercolor either. board. Is, Dan, if that, is that a, a specific type of paper or brand of paper you're talking about that's branded itself as watercolor board? I'm familiar with watercolor paper, obviously, and the different the different uh, surfaces of watercolor paper, which are hot press, thinking, cold press, and rough. And, and illustration board comes kind of like that a little bit too, right? Yeah, there's so, there's cold you can press, and hot press on illustration it. board, but you know what's illustration board is really hard to find anymore because I know. real illustration board used to be made so that it would peel off. Um, from what I understand. I did not know that. Yeah, the top, so that top, the top layer, layer, layer print will peel. Out, print, peel off to be printed. Um, from what I understand, uh, but uh, well, I've got a lot of drawings days, on illustration board at home that have not been peeled off. You know, I just <laughs> I oh yeah, no, yeah. All, you know, when I was in did. college, everything was on the illustration board. Yeah, you know? uh, but but now there are so many different papers out there with so many different types of surfaces um, that it wouldn't surprise me if there is a water watercolor board out oh, there. Oh sure, I, mean, I have pastel board behind right, me. There's right. all, there's acrylic board i'm sure there's multimedia board uh so it wouldn't surprise me there that might be just something that i'm not aware of uh thank you michael r they say the courses are fabulous uh teresa c, c says the live lessons are fantastic thank you uh mm -hmm. the running commentary of why matt is doing whatever he's doing is invaluable <laughs> <laughs> uh, well thanks teresa and it's really just whatever is flowing out of my mind at the moment i'm just sharing what i'm thinking about when i'm creating a piece of art and um ashley did a live lesson series not too long ago and he did the same thing so mm -hmm. uh do the it classes provide instructor feedback uh, we do have a comment section at the bottom of each one of the videos that you can ask questions. But as far as actual art feedback goes, we have a feature called the Members Minute where you can submit original art that you've created. And I choose one piece of artwork and critique that each week and put it into video form and share that with all of the members. That video comes out every Thursday, so a new episode will come out tomorrow. There are currently over 340 member critiques uh, so that's 340 weeks worth of critiques uh, that are available. Uh, obviously, I can't critique every piece of artwork that's sent my way, but you you clearly benefit from the critiques of other people's artworks. Um, it's just like you would see. You know, see, that's a great point because yeah. we're all dealing with the same issues. Right, right. You know, all over the globe at the same time in it by yeah. ourselves <laughs> the purpose of critique you know in art school you put your artwork on the on, on display and uh then each piece of artwork is discussed as a class and the professor and the teacher obviously put their input in it as well and that is such a valuable part of learning 
to be an artist. Uh, so you, you learn a lot from seeing other people's artworks and how they handled certain situations, how they handled different media. We do have a forum, though, uh, C-Monaco, and uh, you can submit your art there, of course, and other members of the community, other people who are part of the forum, can chime in and offer support there as well. And the forum is absolutely free to be a part of. Uh, again, just go to the virtualinstructor.com, look for the community tab in the main menu, and you'll see links to the critique page, which of course is part of the members minute, and also the forum. And both of those places are places where you can post your art and get feedback. One, one, the forum, of course, is where you would get feedback from uh, the other artists who are part of our community. And then the members minute is where you would get feedback from me. Uh, okay, let's see, I, a bunch of questions went through here. Uh, all right, looks like we got about 12 minutes I left. Wish I, could, so I wish I could uh, address all of these. GP says, what kind of pencil sharpener works well for sharpening Karen Dash Luminance colored pencils? Those, of course, are wax-based colored pencils. They're the brightest colored pencils that I've ever come across. Um, I use a, a standard uh, handheld pencil sharpener. Um, and I'm reaching around like I'm going to show it to you, but <laughs> actually it's under the camera right now. But I just use a standard handheld pencil sharpener. Um, do not, I would not recommend using an electric pencil sharpener with wax-based colored pencils as the wax will heat up and get stuck into the, the little blades and ruin mm. the electric pencil sharpener. I know a lot of people still use an electric pencil sharpener. If it works for you, that's fine. But I like to use a handheld pencil sharpener. Just finished a, an extensive drawing using Karen Dash Luminance colored pencils. Uh, that'll be part of an upcoming course here soon. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Julie. Julie says the interaction between Ashley and Matt is priceless. Uh, <laughs> there is more to the lessons than art. That's true. Um, yeah, I look forward to coming over much. here every week and just <laughs> wondering what in the world are we going to talk about this week. <laughs> Buddy says, Ashley, I really love your scene. In drawing, it looks even more inviting to take a seat than on the photo. Oh, that's oh, yeah. so great. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's a good point. I think that mediocre photos can sometimes make great drawings. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, every, everybody. I think everybody looks better in a drawn portrait than in a photograph well, as you know, well. You some know, you things just, I like about photos are when they almost have an abstract quality about them. Hmm. And uh, in a drawing... If it you're does. working from a photo yeah. that has kind of an abstract quality about yeah. it, it just doesn't translate very well. In a drawing. In a drawing, Interesting. Yeah. So that could be a place where you need to just leave the photograph alone. Yeah, but I agree. Your tree has a lot of character there. And a lot of people were, were commenting about how it looked like a Halloween spooky tree. Yeah, well, you know, I thought about that when I was looking, <laughs> when I saw it too, you know, it's, it's not, we're not too close to Halloween, but it doesn't have any leaves on it. You know, I see this as a sort of a poetic scene. You know, we've got this empty bench and we've got mm -hmm. this empty tree, you know, yeah. and so it's about what's not there as much as it is what's there. So I've thought about doing a sort of a series this, um, this season where I include or draw scenes that look like someone belongs there. Other places where it looks Deep. like someone belongs. Yeah. It seems, it's a very poetic That's piece very for me. That's very ethereal of you. It is. Right? It is. So I'm, I will see how that goes. You know, if I can't, uh, can't come up with four more ideas, then I won't have any uh, theme at all. But I, was, I thought that might be kind of nice, you know, inviting quiet scenes where someone sort of belongs. And I'll be straight up honest with everyone. I have no motif chosen for this <laughs> season. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing next week. So I It's guess so we'll, far away. Matt it is lives so in far the away. Moment. There's Matt so much to moment. do between now and then. Yeah, that's true, probably. Um, Let's see here. Teresa C. says, I'm almost finished with the peony in colored pencil. I missed Ashley's oil painting one and your recent charcoal drawing as I'm trying to control how many art supplies I'm going to get at one time. <laughs> <laughs> totally understand that. That's true. Um, we Susan keep says, switching supplies on you. It's a problem. <laughs> right. Susan says, what pencil color class is a good place to start for beginners? And I'm going to assume you're talking about a colored pencil class. And Susan, of course, I'm going to suggest the colored pencil course which is uh, part of the membership program. Uh, the colored pencil course is designed to take, take people who have really no experience with colored pencils and then bring them to a level where they're produci producing high level uh, colored pencils by the end of the course. And it really is, it all boils down to an understanding of color theory, how colored pencils are meant to be used 
and some little tricks of the trade that you can use to uh, ensure accuracy in your drawings, of course. All that kind of combines together to help you be the best colored pencil drawer you can be, <laughs> if that's a that's word, right. drawer. Drawer. Um, I love the path that you're pulling out there. I think it's starting to work. Yeah, it's it definitely to show is. up in there. Yeah. All and I also right. like that it's not a white. It's a, it's a lighter value. The pathway. Yes. Yeah. I see you smudging here and there. Yeah, I am. I keep softening things yeah. with my paper towel. So I don't want to lose all the texture, you know, mm -hmm. but I, it's okay. There's somewhere between, you know, um, marks that retain their original integrity and then just smudging everything away, you know, and I mm -hmm. like that in between place a little bit. Yeah, I think that's important because, you know, most, most of the values we see are probably in that middle range. Oh... It's so wonderful. I didn't know. So fun. It makes you want to erase everything away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear the the machine that's it, working over it, there. It's the, that, it's, electric you know, it's pencil the electric sharpener. pencil sharpener. It, it does speed things up. You, I can make the I can make marks like this without it, but it's a lot more work. Um, um, I have to erase an area out and then use my pencil to kind of clean it back up. So. It's very doable. It's just kind of a time saver, and it's a little. It's fun, and I always, I always love dental tools. And this is as close as I'm ever going to get. <laughs> All right, just put a few little marks down there, and I just wanted to do just a tiny bit of sort of like reverse line shading in the tree, and I'll probably shade over that too. You know, it's the it's the version of texture that I'm creating. Yeah, the light in this scene is kind of interesting. It's it's real low. Um, yeah. Clearly, it's a setting sun or maybe the morning sun, and it's not very intense either, so it mm -hmm. seems like almost a cloudy day. Yeah, it may be. So it makes it a little bit harder to communicate the illusion of form there just through value. Right, that's true. That's true. So that's why I was trying to use some strokes to help out with that. You know, I mean, the tree is not a silhouette, but it's like it wants to be. Now, are All you right. going to Oh, it's time for branches. branches. Yeah, it's time for the branches. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to try to do them with just like pencil strokes, pencil marks. I've got to dull my pencil out a little bit. I need a dull pencil for this. That'll make a fat mark. Yeah, and holding the pencil like that really helps to make an organic mark too. Right. That's the idea is to not fuss over these branches. And, you know, with me anyway, those first branches that you draw, you're the whole time you're going, oh, my gosh, that's not right. That's not right. I know. They that always right. feel out of place. <laughs> so so um, hold your horses. We're going to get some more in here, and it'll probably, <laughs> hopefully, start to look more natural like they belong. And I am picking out specific branches, and I am constantly looking at them, even if I'm not drawing them in the exact same place, because I can't make this stuff up. This is nature. It's way too complicated. So... I need to, you know, I need the reference. I need the variety that I see in there. And so I a little love, bit like a blind contour drawing. I, I love how the branches are pulling the viewer's eye back down to the the bench, too. Yeah, that's what attracted me to the picture in the first place, you know. It's just uh, just perfect place for a bench, I guess. All right. Get back to... And if for some of these little branches that... I mean, there are, a mil you know, not a million. There's thousands of little branches in here. Yeah. But um, the way, one way you can make them look smaller than, they, than your marks is to actually have them slightly disconnected from the branches that they're supposed to be connected to. Mm -hmm. That's little, a good trick. little disconnected branches feel like they're just looking at a thin spot. Maybe that's so thin you can't actually, you know, see all, the, all of the branch. And for me, anyway, I have the tendency to want to include less branches than I should. And mm -hmm. as I continue to add some of those smaller branches, the, the, the branches or the tree itself starts to look a lot more realistic. It starts so, to work, yeah. So some, maybe some, uh, some of you guys out there are struggling with that. Maybe you just need to add more branches. We're going to add branches for four minutes. We've got four <laughs> minutes, and then we're done adding branches, no matter how many more it might need. Um, let's see here. Uh, but he says, Matt, please correct me if I'm wrong. 30 days to test the classes. If you don't like it, you can withdraw and get your money back. But you will love it. I uh, appreciate that. And yes, that's true. We do have a seven-day free trial. And then after that, you do have 30 days to cancel and then request a refund. 
And uh, we don't have many folks that do that, obviously, because of the, the trial. Um, but yeah, that is an option for you as well. It's just the right thing to do, of course. Um, let's see. Lori says, I agree. The drawing is better than the photo, and I definitely agree with that. Oh, thank you. That's what we want to do. You know, we want to find photos, but in, they're, they're limited. You know, we can, we can always improve them or try to. And Diana asks, what are you using to get the lighter values? I'm not sure she's referring well, to the electric pencil I have sharpener. Well, I have an electric pencil sharpener that I've used a little bit. That's what it sounds like there. I've just used a few marks in the tree and then mostly maybe 20 marks or so down here. Mostly just right in the foreground. You know, as low as I can really and, keep And them. you started again. You're not going to be able to stop. I, I'm sorry. You need to put it down. That thing is addictive. It is addictive. You, you'll end up erasing the entire piece of paper. <laughs> and then you have to go back and shade back <laughs> over it, so... Uh, Joni says, I think adding a person would make it so much more interesting. I, I am real tempted to just put a stick man on there right now. <laughs> I think it needs a stick man with all these branches. That would be a hilarious now, little that joke. That would be interesting you if know, you like rendered a stick man. So it looked like he was a stick oh, man. Oh, you're you know right. I mean? A man of branches. Contradicting the realism around I, him. I think that's funny. That's, that's an interesting suggestion there. Well, we took it in the different direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to draw a little picture of Forrest Gump right there. Right, GP says, I'm a lover of oil pastels. Me too, GP. And I seeing the too. landscape tutorial, I appreciate the pictorial touches given with the Sennelier oil pastels. Which other oil pastels come close for creaminess, softness? I don't think there are any other oil pastels that come close to Sennelier. I know Sennelier oil pastels are very expensive, I just ordered another big set of them, and it was painful to do so because they're so creamy and so soft that you just run right through the colors. <laughs> they don't last very long, but they look so much like thick oil paint when you apply them to the surface. They mix like oil paint. You can manipulate them with palette knives. Um, they're just wonderful oil pastels. They're the oil pastels that, in my opinion, come close to paint. Now. That being said, I think there is a need and a place for harder oil pastels like the crepe pot oil pastels. So I like to use the crepe pot oil pastels as kind of a base application. And then as I apply more of the oil pastel to the surface, I switch over to the Sennelier. So if you decide to do that, it will save some of those Sennelier oil pastels, of course. It saves you a lot of money uh, in, in line with that because you're using less of the Sennelier oil pastels. But I, I just can't think of another brand of oil pastels out there that are as creamy and soft and as rich as the Sennelier oil pastels. Again, another example of, of getting what you pay for. Even though those Sennelier oil pastels are really expensive, they're really some of the best, if not the best, oil pastels out there. Um, Is that it? Is the timer? I can't see the timer right seconds. now. Just keep going. Don't worry about 16 it. 16 you, you know, seconds. The, the 45 minutes is a suggestion. Yeah, I actually we try to not, follow not unhappy with this after 45 minutes. We actually have quite a number of minutes left here. Okay. We have eight right. more minutes if, if we have In the to. the show? Okay. Even, you know, the, the time's up and that beeper's going off at the same time. That beeper That's perfect. has nothing to do that with the time's up. What it's a coincidence. <laughs> it's just another piece of machinery in here telling me that something's broken. <laughs> so. Right. But it just happened at the, at the time's up. What a perfect coincidence. And we've there. talked about adding a noise in, you know. <laughs> yeah. I thought you'd snuck one in on me. I brought my broken glasses and you'd put a timer, a timer <laughs> chime in there. You both had tricks. Um, now, there's still room to get darker in this pencil. You know, I mean, I, I've darkened this area well, once, you know, at the beginning, and then I went over and hit it a second time. And this is a 6B pencil, and I can still get a little darker, but there's a little bit of, uh, of, of sort of a mark-making texture in there. Mm -hmm. And if I get too much darker, I'll lose that. It yeah. is almost a total silhouette. It really flattens out in the original photograph up here. So I just want to be careful up there. You know, I told myself I wasn't going to get quite as dark, and I have a tendency to, um, to overshade. Because uh, I think that, you know, you're better off going too dark than too light. But in this case, I think I could lose a little bit of the form that I've tried to create if I do that. 
Yeah, I agree with that. You're better going too dark than too light, but almost all the time. Yeah, just almost. be careful that you don't go too dark too quickly. So yeah. be patient about making True. those those values darker. And that that's what Ashley has done. He started uh, he started with by establishing the areas of dark value, but then he progressively made them darker that's when right. he needed to. Put a few little fresh marks down here on the path, maybe even a shape like a stone, and I think that's probably good. All right. Uh, I have in, almost entirely ignored the bench. You know, I got the bench blocked in early and just left it alone. I'm not sure if it was quite dark enough. It was pretty close. Um, and Buddy, Buddy is asking, asking, Ashley, do you use a tissue as your blending stump? Or as a blending tool? I am ashamed to admit that I forgot to bring a blending stump, but I have a <laughs> tissue in my pocket. You've got like 30 I don't here. even. You should have I don't even know me. what I used this tissue for earlier in the day. Probably to clean my broken glasses. Here, have brand but, new uh, ones right here in the you know, package. It, you know what? I don't mind using the tissue, the, yeah. uh, the uh, paper towels. You know, because it's kind of it's a little bit softer anyway yeah. than oh, a yeah. stump. And you know, the way I was using it was kind of broad. You can mm -hmm. see the mark on there. You know, I had it folded kind of like this. So I was almost using it like a brush, you know, so that I didn't get marks from the pointy stump. It, you know, it's kind of a pointy tool also. So the stump's great, but I didn't mind using this. It wasn't just because I didn't bring a stump. And for this drawing, it, it that works, works for this. works perfect. Yeah, I just wanted perfect. to sort of, almost like a, the blur tool in, uh, in Photoshop. I just wanted to sort of blur the area and then start to bring it back a little bit and then blur it up a little bit and then sharpen the contours as necessary. That's a good way to work. It's interesting here. Simon says the bench looks sad. <laughs> That's because it's lonely. <laughs> It, that might be my theme, That's loneliness. That's got the tree there. Yeah, loneliness. Oh, that, this drawing would work for that theme. Now, I'll tell sure. you what I've been thinking about with this tree um, ever since I picked it out. And it doesn't look like the tree, but it reminds me of the story. And it, it's the giving tree. Matt, do you know that story? I don't. Oh, know. my oh, goodness. Oh, yes, I think By that, Shel Silverstein. Yes, the, the man and the woman. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of the greatest stories ever written, and it's on like 15 pages. That's it's a children's Shel book. That's by Shel Silverstein? Shel, is that his name? He Shel? wrote Where the Sidewalk Comes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He's a genius. And so, a light in the attic. Is oh, my gosh. Him? Yeah. He, I, if my artwork could look like his stories this season, that would be great. So I love um, both of those, you know, where the sidewalk ends, but also the giving uh -huh. tree. And I've read the giving tree before plenty of times to my kids. And um, I tell you what, it is just, it's just heartbreaking. It's hard to get through, even after you've read it about 20 times. For a children's <laughs> book, it's hard to get to. So I, I think that, that for me. That story touches home. Right. It really hits home. So here it is. Get Here's the right giving there. tree. The man has left, but he's going to come back and he's going to cut this tree down to build a house. And one day he'll sit on the stump. That's what's in this tree's future. Wow. All right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. What an ending. Um, excellent drawing. And just real quickly here, Gregory says, well done, sir. Thank you. Hoot and Holler says, thanks for another informative and entertaining get sketchy. Uh, let's see. Michelle says, amazing with a smiley face with hearts coming out of the eyes. All right. Uh, Gregory says, question, Ashley, what textural strokes did you use for the grass in the foreground? So um, I did scribble, and I was using, let's see, I'll draw here to the side. I kept making sort of scribbles that went upward. You know, there was kind of a base to them. So there was quite a few little shapes kind of like this um, to start the texture. And then, I, and then I kept working with those types of marks or really just sort of scribbly marks, um, moving my pencil in a variety of directions with some midtones and then just try to pull those together. And, of course, near the end, I did start breaking out the electric pencil sharpener that I can make some really crisp, Maybe you can see that, you know, really crisp little marks on top of that. Almost too crisp, so then I mushed them out a little bit. So I used the electric pencil sharpener just from here down because that's the foreground. And you want more contrast in the foreground. Um, or I want more contrast in the foreground because I like to think about atmospheric perspective all the time, you know. So you can have a bigger difference between light and dark in up close and less of a difference as you go back. And, of course, the tree is not very far away from the foreground. So I just needed just that little extra sort of level of, of detail um, to kind of separate the foreground ground plane from the tree. And then, you know, maybe a little bit extra 
um, range of value down there also. Guys, thanks so much for all the mm -hmm. comments. Uh, lots, lots of compliments here. Uh, just want to address one more here, if we can help Diana yeah. out. Uh, let's see. Diana says, I bought my first set of graphite pencils. It came with this white thing that is sharpened on both ends. Is that a blending stump? I'm willing to bet it is I'll a blending bet it stump. is, yeah. yeah. A blending bet. stump is typically sharpened on both ends. That's right. It looks like compressed paper. A blending tortilla is actually just rolled up paper, and it's usually only sharp on one end because mm -hmm. it's rolled up paper. But it's a stump. Uh, and Teresa says, Ashley, you make it look so doable. Thanks for another great drawing. And let's see. Joni says, great sketch. All right, I think that's Thank it. you. Thank you for all your warm comments. I really appreciate that. That encourages me. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around for the first episode of season five of Getting Sketchy. I'd like to remind you that we're going to be live over at thevirtualinstructor.com in 30 minutes from now. That's 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the East Coast of the United States. And it's 30 minutes from now, wherever you are in the world, if you're watching this live, of course. Um, and of course, that requires you to be a member. There's more information about a membership program below this video. You can click on the link and check it out. There's also a link where you can check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free. So that uh, gives you a little sneak peek into the membership program. If you're one of those people who's really scared of commitment, <laughs> you can check that out. But that also gets, us on, gets you on our mailing list so that when we have new lessons to share with you, we can send you an email and uh, let you know about it. Uh, Ashley did a fantastic job. Do you have anything else to say um, to the folks I'm here? looking forward to Man in the Chat next week and talking with you guys while Matt draws. So I hope you come back next week. And um, you've got 30 minutes, so you can join the virtualinstructor.com and see us over there at the uh, live lesson. Absolutely. And uh, it's going to be a surprise to me what I'm going to be drawing next week. I uh, have no idea what materials I'm going to be using. I have no idea what motif I'm going to be doing. And uh, <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure that out uh, probably I this still weekend, think it would, maybe. I still think it would be fun if I picked out your drawings or your references and you picked out mine and we didn't show them to each other until it was time to draw. You know, that might be an idea. We might need to do that for at least two of the episodes. Yeah, that might be that might we'll, be exciting. We'll make it uh, be <laughs> like a surprise episode. Right, right. That That's a great idea. I'm, I'm actually down for that. Okay. Uh, you guys can let us know what you think about that idea in the comments below this video. Uh, if you'd like to see something like that, I'm sure you're going to all say that you want to <laughs> see something like that. Don't forget to like this video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting materials, medium, subject matter, just about everything Philosophy. you can think about that is uh, that is uh, covered with 2D art material is covered here on this channel. In fact, the last YouTube video I made, I painted my son's shoes, which was way different. They look than super normal. though. I mean, they look really great. So you should have you should have Matt paint you a pair of shoes too. I'm thinking about it. I don't think you should have Matt paint you a pair of shoes <laughs> because I had those shoes for so long. That he almost outgrew them. He yeah. can't even wear them anymore. I know. He's outgrown you should, them. You should, got, you should have got some size 12. That would have given you until he got to high school. No. He's just growing so fast, guys, okay? Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, you guys have a great week. Uh, have a wonderful week. Stay safe and healthy. Good night, everybody. All right, we out. All right. Very good. Very good.